Hey kids, it's Trailblazer as usual. Uh, so my mission for today, which I have chosen to accept, is to rate the mechs from the new Mercenaries box set. If you've been living under a rock lately, uh, you might not know, but other people will know that there is a box set coming out uh, themed around Mercenaries. It has some vehicles and it has eight mechs. And today I'm going to be talking just about the mechs and giving them letter grades on the basis of how tough I think they are. So for each mech, the grade will be based on how good is the best variant. And I'm going to be providing, uh, you know, highlighting a couple of variants for each mech. First, I'll talk about which one is the best overall fighter, the one that's gonna be most useful in a battle out of all the variants of this mech. And then next, I'm going to talk about which one is the best battle value deal. If you're paying for, if you're playing for BV, which one is the best deal for your BV buck? And finally, for some of the designs, I'm going to have an honorable mention variant that I want to highlight that isn't the best, but is very good and very interesting. So I'm going to start out first with the flea, and on this list, the first is the worst. The flea will be rated D. You know, I think the flea is pretty suboptimal. It's one of these cheap 20-ton mechs, and it just does a much worse job of being a cheap 20-ton mech than the Locust. A pattern that you will see with the variants of the flea that we look at is that the armor is just absolutely substandard, even for a 20-ton mech, especially the armor placement. So the one that I think comes the closest to being something that would be useful in a fight is the flea 16 variant because of its speed. It goes 914, which is a very respectable speed. You know, that can be pretty useful for running at objectives in Battletech. It does have a standard fusion engine as well, so that adds a bit to its resiliency. Although honestly, I would much prefer an XL engine together with better armor on this mech. The weapons are pretty good, pretty much about as good as you can get for a 20 tonner. Two medium lasers and a flamer. You know, better if the flamer was a third medium, but other than that, you know, flamers can be useful against infantry. So, okay, it's looking like a decent mech so far for a 20 tonner, but take a look at that armor diagram. So in particular, I wanna direct your attention to the legs, four armor on each of those legs. That means a couple of things. One thing is a regular inner sphere medium laser is going to go internal on those legs and potentially cause a critical hit. The second thing is an inner sphere large laser is gonna just take the leg off all the way. So this mech does not have sufficient protection on those legs and it's going to suffer in battle. You know, if it ever gets hit, there's an excellent chance that it's going down for the count. For the best battle value deal for the flea, I wanna look at this fire ant. You know, the mech is obviously a beast against infantry with six machine guns and three flamers. Also, that's not a bad arsenal against mechs for something that moves pretty fast like this thing does. You can run right up to something, you kick it, and you just blast it with all these little weapons. That's not terrible, so the punch is all right. But again, it has even worse armor than the variant that we just looked at, and those legs are the same. There's no protection to them. It's, you know, four armor. It's not that much better than zero armor, to be honest. You know, but the good thing about the mech is that it has a very low battle value of 330. So if you wanted to take this instead of a stinger or some other little piece of crap, you know, that you pay 300 some battle value for, you could do that. It's fine, you know, it could be playable as just a little initiative sync mech. So the Firefly is better because the Firefly's armor is much better. That's the one virtue of the Firefly is the armor. But I'm rating it a C- minus because for a light mech, the mobility is terrible. And in particular, the mech has one of the most bizarre movement profiles you'll ever see. Walk 5, jump 4. This is so suboptimal. Why would you not put that fifth jump jet on the mech so that it can get an extra target movement modifier point and, you know, just max out the jump range? Why would you do this? It's, it's crazy. It's one of the craziest mech design decisions that I have seen made on a light mech. Okay, so the best Firefly for winning in a fight is this Introtech level 4A Firefly. 
as you can see the armor is one point short of maximum so that's solid armor the mech can take a 10 point hit uh, pretty much anywhere in the front it skimps a point on the head which is actually not a bad choice at all and then it's got a whole bunch of small lasers and three medium lasers which you know it can it can work up a bit of heat but that's fine it's definitely going to hit pretty decently hard when it gets up close to something so this would be a decent backstabber the only thing is that four points of jump movement hmm that's really not great you know you could kind of treat this mech almost like a real mini like a uh, grasshopper if you wanted to it functions a little bit like a grasshopper it even has a useless LRM5 on it like a grasshopper does but you know the fact that you're comparing the movement profile of a light mech to a grasshopper tells you something about how suboptimal this design is you know it's it's not unplayable though and the best battle value is going to be the same variant because you're paying 830 battle value for quite a few lasers and quite a bit of armor even though the movement profile is pretty unimpressive especially for a 30 tonner and i'm going to give an honorable mention for the firefly to this 4c variant it has an extra light engine so it does not have the resilience of the other firefly variants that we've just looked at but it does have something kind of cool which is three medium pulse lasers so this mech could be a really effective light mech hunter you know and, and a pretty cheap one for what you're getting paying 800 battle value you could definitely use this mech to kind of bodyguard bigger mechs and protect them from light mechs with those three medium pulse it has a worthless anti-missile system but whatever i mean you know it could do something but yeah you know it's, it's not a great mech but it has its virtues especially for the battle value price you're paying okay the quick draw i'm going to try and you know control my biases here because the quick draw is a mech I have hated since I was a kid I hated the look of it it had this weird kind of coke can head that just you know you guys know me right I think the head of a mech says a lot about how does it look overall and the quick draw just had a terrible looking head and you know just an uninspiring body design too very boring mech design really ugly and They've redesigned the quick draw, which is great. It looks a lot better than it did, but a lot better than the original quick draw is still not great. So this is not an awesome looking mech. So I don't like it to start out with, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna try and be objective. I'm giving the quick draw a C, and the problem that you will see with the quick draw is the one, one that I've been talking about already, you know, with previous mechs, the armor, is not good it really suffers in the armor department now the best quick draw to win in a fight it's kind of a tough choice but I'm going with this quick draw 8k it's I mean the main thing about it is that it has the least bad armor of any quick draw it's got 15 points on all the front locations except you know the head obviously so that's pretty good you know for a quick draw right it's still missing like 50 points of armor that it could have it's got four ER medium lasers, which is a decent kind of like short medium range arsenal. It's got a it's got a medium range missile launcher, which sucks. Like MRM launchers suck. But those medium lasers by themselves are not bad. You could use this mech to kind of jump behind stuff. Um, yeah, it's a it's a decent fighter, but it's not great. I mean the thing about the quick draw is you know, 585 at a 60 ton movement profile, you kind of wonder. Why didn't they just cut five tons off it and make it 55 tons? Of course, a 60 ton mech that goes 585 and works great is the Blackhawk KU, but this mech ain't no Blackhawk KU. Now the best battle value deal, and this is another contender for the best fighter too. Maybe this should have been the best fighter. Anyway, uh, you lop 300 battle value points off of that, that quick draw you reduce the armor by 10 points and you get this quick draw C which has four regular medium lasers and an SRM4 as its forward firing arsenal. So, you know, in, in close range, this mech doesn't do that bad. And it's kind of like an exterminator a little bit, except it lops off the useless LRM10 that the original quick draw also had. 
and it's only wasting one medium laser pointing into the rear arc. You know, the armor, again, it, it's not great, and it doesn't have 15 points on the arms where two of its medium lasers are located, so that's pretty suboptimal. But it's, you know, it, it's got plenty of heat sinks. It's got too many heat sinks, probably. You could definitely use this one as kind of a consistent um, jumper, backstabber mech, kind of a flanker that you can fire with every turn if you want to. It's not terrible, especially for a quick draw. And I'm not going to include an honorable mention for the quick draw because I don't want to honor the quick draw. All right, the Caesar. Now, this is a mech whose looks I like very much, including the original Caesar, but the redesign looks even better probably. Objectively though, the Caesar has never been that strong of a mech. I'm going to rate it a C plus. It does have one variant that's a strong fighter, although I can think probably of better mechs. So the best variant of the Caesar in terms of sheer fighting power is the 3S Caesar. You know, this mech hits with two 15 point shots at decently long range. It's got a heavy PPC and a gas rifle. So that's some pretty heavy duty long range hitting power. It's kind of equivalent to the Avatar G, if you've ever played that with that mech, which has two Gauss rifles. This mech hits in kind of a similar way. Now, a couple of differences. One thing is this mech has a light engine and it has maximum armor. So that's pretty good, right? It's got some durability there. The only problem as far as resilience goes, and this is a problem that is endemic to the Caesar as a platform, well, it's got a Gauss rifle sitting in that right torso. One critical hit on that thing and it explodes, takes that whole right torso with it. Now, because this mech has a light engine and uh, I'm pretty sure it has case, it's not going to go away when it loses that right torso, but all of its weapons except for the left arm medium pulse laser will go away. So losing the right torso is almost a mission kill for this mech. So, you know, any hit on the right torso is either going to be hitting the engine or it's going to be almost entirely taking the mech out. And this does reduce its effective resilience compared with that avatar, which has its Gauss rifles in the arms. So, you know, I mean, but this mech, this mech is definitely eminently playable and could be a good fighter. As far as a deal for your battle value, the original Caesar 3R is kind of interesting in this respect. You know, if you think of it as a 70 ton mech and you're thinking, do I take this instead of a well-designed archer or warhammer? You're gonna think, oh, you know, I don't want this, right? Because the armor is so substandard, 10 and a half tons really, it's nothing. But what you can compare this mech to is for example, a Huron warrior, right? So if you compare this to a Huron warrior, which has very similar battle value, the Caesar is slower, it has about the same armor, actually, pretty much exactly the same armor. It's got, you know, a couple of rear mounted medium pulse lasers, which could be useful against light mech attackers. And it has an ER PPC instead of the ER large laser, which is a better kind of companion. The, the ER PPC is a better companion for the Gauss rifle in terms of the punch that the Caesar has. So I think I would rate the Caesar, this Caesar 3R, close to the Huron Warrior. Maybe it's a little bit worse because the Huron Warrior's speed is such a significant advantage, but it's not orders of magnitude worse than that Huron Warrior by any means, and I think of the Huron Warrior as a pretty good mech. Okay, now we're getting into territory with some nice stuff. The Ostsol. I would give this mech a B. You know, some of the best variants of the Ostsol are very playable. It has a nice kind of design philosophy of putting its main weapons in the torso so that the hands are free to punch. It has good speed. You know, Ostsols tend to move five and eight, which is a really nice speed for a 60 ton mech. And, you know, it's just a generally cool design with a lot of fun variants, which we'll take a look at. So the variant that I would want to take into battle the most if I was looking to really do some damage and survive some damage is the Ostsol 6D. So this mech has an XL engine, but the arsenal is entirely energy based. So there's no ammunition or Gauss rifles or other exploding components. 
So you're gonna have to chew through, you know, at least one of those side torsos in its entirety pretty much to kill the mech in most games. It's got good heat sinks. It has a wide variety of different lasers, including some pulse lasers for fighting light mechs. Maximum armor, which I like very much. That, that great 5.8 movement profile. You know, this mech is going to be really useful as a trooper. It's, it's, a, it's a solid choice. Uh, maybe the, for the battle value, the battle value is a little expensive for what you get. But if you're just saying, what's its fighting power? The fighting power of the Ossol 60 is pretty strong. If you're looking at good deals for the battle value, I want to direct your attention to this interesting Ossol 8D. Now this thing has a couple of things that make it pretty resilient. It's got a light engine and it's got maximum armor. So right there, you know, good resilience. It does have some ammunition, quite a bit of it actually. Four tons of light AC5 ammo. If I was taking this mech into a battle, I would probably want to dump some of that ammo, to be honest. But it does have case in both torsos, so it will survive an ammunition explosion. And those light AC5s are really interesting, especially paired with, I also want to draw your attention to, the mech's targeting computer. Okay, so you put precision ammunition in those autocannons, and then you combine them with a targeting computer. It's like having pulse lasers combined with a targeting computer. That's pretty sweet. It's also got some nice lasers and a light PPC as backup weapons. Those weapons are all going to benefit from that targeting computer. Bottom line, the targeting computer is basically always a great deal for the battle value. You're basically getting like a veteran pilot for a much smaller investment in battle value than you would spend on a veteran pilot. So this mech is very much something that I would be happy to take into a competitive game. Finally, honorable mention goes to the original 4D Ostsol. This mech is not perfect. Its armor is lacking but it has many other virtues. It's kind of like, you know, it kind of fights like a crab, right? It has the same movement profile as the crab and the same kind of weapons arsenal. But again, those weapons go in the torsos, so they're well protected. It's got light armor on the arms, which is no problem because it's fine if those arms fall off. The only thing that is not so great about this mech is if you look at the rear side torso armor, four points on each of those rear side torsos. Remember, four points is kind of a magic bad number because an inner sphere medium laser is then going to pierce that armor and inflict a critical hit on your side torsos. You don't want that. So you don't want anything getting behind your Ostsol 4D. That's a problem with the mech. But look, every mech from the 3025 era, almost every mech has some problems. Overall, I would say that this is a pretty strong mech for the period, and so that's why I'm giving it an honorable mention. Okay, now the Chameleon we'll take a look at. This mech I'm giving a B+, even though the majority of the variants of the Chameleon are real bad, and they're kind of like way too lightly armored versions of the Phoenix Hawk, basically. But there is one variant of the Chameleon which I would say is kind of an improved Phoenix Hawk. And this one variant is so good that it's going to catapult the Chameleon up to a rating of B plus for me. The variant I speak of is the Chameleon 7W. Now this mech, if you look at it, the armor is good. It's not maximum, it's like one ton short of maximum, but it's pretty, pretty good, I would say. Um, better than a Phoenix Hawk, better than a typical Phoenix Hawk. Another nice thing about the mech is that it has a 300 rated basic standard fusion engine. So this mech, you know, with its energy arsenal and its standard fusion engine, it's going to take a lot to kill this mech, quite a bit. Other than that, it acts like a Phoenix Hawk. It's got one medium pulse laser, so, you know, that will help you to kind of get some hits in even when you're jumping. You probably want to put maybe a veteran pilot on this mech because that will help the other two lasers to hit well. It's a really nice jumper, kind of light hunter, medium mech. I would rate it very highly indeed. And the best deal for your battle value with the Chameleon, it's no contest. This 7W Chameleon only costs 1,243 battle value. 
it's a really solid mech. I'm not going to rate any of the other Chameleon variants. There's one that has like three large lasers, but the heat sinks just don't line up in the right way. That mech's no good. 7W is the Chameleon to take if you're going to play with a Chameleon. Okay, now we're getting to the real good stuff. The Star Slayer. The Star Slayer is a mech where it took me a while to realize how good it is, but this thing is good. And it's got a couple of variants that are pretty good, I would say. Now compare the Star Slayer with the Crab, right? The Star Slayer goes 585. Mmm, that's nice. It's got a standard engine like the Crab. So it kind of combines the resilience of the Crab with the sheer flanking damage dealing capability of a modern Wolverine, right? Two large lasers, two medium lasers, and an SRM4. This thing's going to hit hard, okay? And if it pushes the heat just a tiny bit, it can fire a full salvo of those weapons into an enemy mech. With 585 movement, it's not so hard to get into the rear arc. You're going to be putting a lot of damage onto your enemies with this Star Slayer. The armor placement is great, maximum armor. There's really nothing to complain about when it comes to this mech. It's an excellent fighter, especially for a 50 tonner. Same variant gets the best battle value deal for the Star Slayer. Now, 1500 battle value is not the cheapest thing in the world. You know, compare it to that Chameleon, for example. But it's worth it, right? This mech can take punishment, it can deal punishment, and it moves really well. It's, it's got the, the whole package. I do have to give a shout out and honorable mention to one other variant, the Star Slayer 3D. This is the ERPPC version of the Star Slayer. It's kind of like a Star Slayer if you equip it with something more like the weapons arsenal of a Lynx. Except again, unlike the Lynx, it's got that standard fusion engine. So it's got more resiliency. Now this mech is really nice against the clans because you can get in hits with that ERPPC at long range. Some players don't like the ERPPC. I think it's a fine weapon, but this mech doesn't use it that perfectly because the heat sinks on the mech don't line up so well with the weapons arsenal. You're going to be putting on heat if you're using just the ERPPC plus the large laser. Then if you bracket out the ERPPC, well you're only going to be gaining 14 heat unless something's in your rear and you're shooting with that rear laser. So the mech's not incredibly optimized, but you could kind of see, well I'll switch in the ERPPC then I'll switch it out and I'll switch it in. You know, a lot of the time, yeah, I, anyway, there's problems with the heat management on this mech, but other than that, I like it very much. So I think it's, I think it's a solid mech. I could see taking it, especially in a kind of campaign game compared with a battle value balance game where you would normally want the 3C. So the Devastator is another A-rated mech. Woo, this thing is a beast. It is the definitive beast. There's really just one variant that you want to play with. I mean, the DVS-3 is not bad, but the DVS-2, this mech is pitch perfect for what it's trying to do. It's got two Gauss rifles. Nice thing about these Gausses is that they are in the arms. So if one of them goes off, that's not automatically going to blow away the mech's side torso and bust out that XL engine. That makes the Devastator a lot better than other Gauss boat mechs like the Thunderhawk or the Pillager. And also to even get to hitting those weapons or hitting those side torsos, you are going to have to burrow through 296 points of armor, which is a lot, okay. Um, this mech, I would say it's one of the best Gauss toting 100 ton mechs. I might give the King Crab 001 an edge over this mech if we're factoring in the battle value cost, but if we're not factoring the battle value cost, the Devastator is just, you know, an absolute top shelf Gauss boat mech. Best deal for the battle value is the same variant. There's not really big battle value differences between the different Devastator variants, and this one just has the nice kind of medium laser backup arsenal that you like to see on a mech like this. It's extremely effective. But yeah, 2500 battle value, that is a lot to spend on a mech in most, you know, battle tech games. So if you take one 
invest in it, make it a centerpiece of your lance. Don't leave it unsupported. It won't fail you if you support it properly. But if you don't support it properly, it is still a mech with an extra light engine, so it can die quicker than you think. Be careful. All right, folks, that's all I've got to say about the mechs from the Mercenaries box set. Hope you enjoyed the video as always. And, you know, thanks as always for your support. I love making this channel. I love talking about Battletech with you folks. So, uh, yeah, yeah, go out and pick up this box set and enjoy some of these mechs on the field.